Hello YouTube and welcome to part 4 of this CRP5 series and today we're going to be looking at speed, distance and time. Now, I never used to teach a lot of speed, distance and time on the CRP5 when I used to teach to my students for the simple and what turned out to be somewhat naive assumption that everyone already knew how to do it uh, simply because when I did my PPR my instructor was very strict with, use, with the use of the CRP5 and made sure that I knew how to use it inside out from day one and I assumed that all PPL instructors would teach their students to do speed distance and time calculations using the CRP5 uh, fairly early on. It was only when I started teaching things like general navigation uh, and I was teaching how to use the CRP5 I used to skip over the speed distance and time calculations on the assumption that the students all knew what they were doing uh, and one day a student said to me I've never used the CRP5 to calculate your speed distance and time and I was somewhat bemused by that uh, and I said well how do you how do you calculate your times on your on your plugs he said well, I, I use a calculator obviously and I said right okay but to me that didn't make a lot of sense because if you look at the back of the CRP5, this is the side that you do all your wind calculations on when you're working out your drift and when you finally put your pencil mark on here as you'll see when we start doing some wind calculations later on in this series you end up calculating what your ground speed is from your true airspeed depending on the direction and strength of the wind so if you know your ground speed and you've already got your CRP5 in your hand then it makes sense just to flip it over and then use this side to work out your time instead of having to put the CRP5 down, pick up a calculator and then calculate your time uh, using another method. But from what I've heard an awful lot of people don't use the CRP5 to calculate speed, distances and times. So that's what this video is all about. It's a very simple setup. On the outer scale we have our distance calculations. Again, as you can see, we've got feet, nautical miles, statute miles, kilometers, uh, meters, and yards. On the inner scale, we have time. Now you can see here on the inner scale, we've got hours, which is represented by this blue circle. Uh, on your CRP5, it may be a different color. I think it's yellowy orange on the actual CRP5. Uh, and on the, on the outer part of the inner scale, these black numbers here and you can see if I turn this around we can see the word minutes so the inner rotating scale is your time in hours and minutes and then your speed is actually de denoted by this black triangle this black triangle is called the index mark and you'll notice that it's coincident with the number 60 uh, the reason for that is because your speed, if you think about a speed of a vehicle, let's say it's doing 50 miles per hour, you're talking about a distance per hour and obviously there are 60 minutes in an hour so if I point this uh, this triangle, this index mark at say 80, that will represent 80 miles an hour. Okay. So, uh, last thing to mention is I guess the units of speed that you use will depend upon the units of distance used in the calculation. So if you're using kilometers for distance then obviously the speed that you calculate will be in kilometers per hour. If you use statute miles for your distance you'll end up getting an answer in statute miles per hour. So with that covered let's do uh, three fairly straightforward examples just to show you fairly briefly how to do speed distance and time calculations on the CRP5. So, question number one. You're flying from Bournemouth to Dunkerswell in Devon. The distance is 53 nautical miles and you're flying your light aircraft at 95 knots. Now we're going to assume that 95 knots is a ground speed because ordinarily you'd calculate your airspeed in, in knots um, from the POH and you'll calculate a true airspeed and then you take the wind into account to calculate what your ground speed is. So you're flying a distance of 53 nautical miles, 95 knots. How long will it take? So this is a time question. How long will it take? Now you should be aware that the equation for uh, time is distance divided by speed. So distance divided by speed, we have distance on the outer scale, uh, we have our index mark there, so how do we work out a time? 
Well, we already know what the speed is. We said it's 95 knots. So if I position this index mark at 95, the CRP5 is now set up for for all the distance and time calculations assuming I'm doing 95 knots and that's fairly obvious to see because if I've pointed the index mark at 95 and I were to ask well how far will I travel in one hour well one hour is 60 minutes so I'll travel 95 nautical miles okay perfect sense so uh, 95 knots and we've got 53 nautical miles to travel so 53 is down here somewhere now before we do the calculation again ask yourself a question uh, what do you think the answer is going to be approximately? Well, 53 nautical miles is approximately 50, and 95 is approximately 100. So if I'm doing about 100 knots and I've got to travel 50 miles, how long is it going to take? About half an hour. So I'm expecting an answer around about 30 minutes. So what I have to do is find 53 miles on the outer scale. There's 51, 52, 53. And that tells me, if we zoom in, you can see there minutes on the inner scale there's 31, 32, 33, 33 and a half minutes so if I'm flying from Bournemouth to Dunk as well 53 nautical miles at 95 knots it will take me about uh, 33 and a half minutes right next question we've done a time question let's now do a speed question I'll leave the slightly longer winded question till the end so a speed question you're flying from Wellsbourne in Staffordshire to Le Touquet in northern France. The distance of your flight is 158 nautical miles. Now let's just ignore the fact that in order for you to fly that route you'd have to fly directly over central London. But imagine that you've done that flight Wellsbourne to Le Touquet, 158 nautical miles and it takes you 1 hour and 15 minutes to do it. Question what is your speed? Right, so we've got our distance, 158, and we need to line that up with a time of 1 hour 15. So we need to find the distance of 158 on the outer scale, which will be over here. There's 152, 4, 6, 8. And underneath that on the inner scale, we need to put the time, which is 1 hour and 15 minutes, which is also 75 minutes. And you can see here we've got 1 hour 10, 1 hour 20 and obviously in the middle is 1 hour 15 which is also represented by 70 minutes, 75 minutes and 80 minutes so if I line up 75 minutes underneath 158 all I do now is look for my index mark and that will tell me that in order to travel 158 nautical miles in an hour and 15 minutes I need to travel about 127 knots 127 nautical miles per hour. Again, you can ask yourself the question, does that make sense? Well, if I'm doing 127 knots, that means I'm doing 127 nautical miles in one hour. I've got 158 nautical miles to travel, so I'm expecting the time to take me just over an hour. The time's obviously an hour and 15 minutes, so the speed calculation appears to be correct. Next question, slightly long-winded question. Uh, we can actually do two different calculations in one with this. This is a distance question. You're flying a PA-28 and you've got full tanks. So full tanks in the PA-28 is 24 US gallons both sides. So you've got 48 usable gallons, US gallons of fuel in your aircraft. Now assuming you're flying at 75% power, according to the PA-28 POH, you will burn 8.5 gallons per hour. The question is, assuming you're flying at a ground speed of 100 knots, what is the maximum distance you can fly? So we've got a PA-28 with full tanks, we're flying at 100 knots, what's the furthest distance we can fly on that? Knowing that the POH states that at 75% power, you're burning 8.5 gallons an hour. Well, we know the equation for distance is speed times time. We already know our speed, but we don't know our time yet. We've got to work out an endurance, and how do we do that? Well, we know that we're burning 8.5 gallons an hour, and we've got 48 US gallons total. So what we need to do is we need to set up our index mark. If we set our index mark there 
on 8.5 because we know we're burning eight and a half US gallons an hour. And then all we have to do is say, well, I've got 48 US gallons. So how long can I fly for? So eight and a half. We can look all the way around the outer scale now for 48, which is all the way down here. So I'm going to turn this upside down. Now again, let's have a, a brief pause for a second and think about what we're expecting. Uh, 8 into 48 go about 6. Yeah, 6 times 8 is 48, so about 5 or 6. So I'm expecting about 5 to 6 hours, something like that. So we've set up our index mark down here to 8.5 US gallons per hour. And I'm now going to look around here to 48 US gallons on the outer scale. Now I know I said that the outer scale is actually for distance, but in this concept we're just using it again as a multiplication tool just to do calculations of uh, whatever I've set this unit up to. I can work out what my endurance is on the inner scale by working out the total amount of fuel on the outer scale. So 45, 46, 47 and 48. And you can see there that burning 8.5 US gallons an hour with 48 US gallons available. Oops, sorry, where's that? 45, 46. Oh, there you go. There's 48 there. You can see that I've actually got 300 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 304 minutes uh, of fuel. Is that 340 minutes of fuel, actually? And you can see on the inside scale here that where our 60 had one hour on the blue scale, there's one hour, there's two hours, there's three hours, there's four hours, there's five hours, and there's six hours. So each one of these marks is about, what's that? That's about five and a half hours. So that's just about 5.6, 5.7 hours. So five and a half hours, I'll call it. Maybe five hours, 42 minutes. It's close enough. Let's call it five and a half hours. So we now know our time and that endurance is five and a half hours or 340 minutes to be slightly more exact and we know we're flying at 100 nautical miles an hour so let's turn this back upside down so let's line the CRP5 up and our index mark is going to be our speed and I'm going to put the speed onto 100 which is our ground speed and I now need to find five and a half hours or more accurately 340 minutes on the inside scale and then figure out what the distance is that we can fly. Now again, let's do a quick calculation in our heads to make sure that we, we know the answer that we get is going to be correct. And we're doing 100 knots, we're going to be flying for five and a half hours, 100 times five and a half is 550. So we're looking for a number around about 550. So again, speed is set up as required. Let's turn this upside down. And on the inside scale, we're looking for uh, five and a half hours, which is just over here somewhere. Move that to there. So five and a half hours or 340 minutes is right about there. And you can see that the total distance traveled will be 550, 560, about 565 nautical miles. So that's how you use the CRP5 to work out speed, distances and times. Again, once you're doing your calculations on this side of the CRP5, you've already got your ground speed which you've calculated, so it doesn't take a minute to spin this round onto this side. Stick your ground speed in, point the index mark at your ground speed, look at the distance on the outer scale and read off underneath exactly how long your flight's going to take you. It really is that simple. Any questions? Don't hesitate to ask. Stick them in the comments and I'll speak to you for part five pretty soon. Thank you.